Hello everybody, I'm John and welcome to another quick painting tutorial for Storm Sunder and in this one we're going to be looking at Lady Renata. Now Lady Renata is an incredibly detailed miniature. Uh, lots of texture, lots of detail going on with her. Um, you could spend days, weeks on this miniature if you really wanted to and a lot of you will. I know there's a lot of very talented painters and a lot of very talented and motivated hobbyists uh, in the, the community that watches these videos, which is great. Um, but you'll all remember that the ethos here uh, with my Three Colors Up videos is get it table ready. Do something that's effective, quick, uh, doesn't cause you a lot of eye strain and doesn't want uh, doesn't make you pull all your hair out, especially when you don't have as much hair as you used to in some cases, Justin. Um, so we're going to be looking at a lot of contrast paints here, of course, and uh, just picking what colors we want, get some nice sort of vibrancy going, uh, working on some wings, a very simple way of doing wings. And I've also brought back the airbrush for this tutorial as well, mainly only in the priming and the pre-shade stage. I only explain it, I don't show it. There are other videos in the three colors up range that show uh, the pre-shading being done. So please go check those out, of course. Um, as always, remember, keep it simple, keep it fast. And um, let's get stuck right in. So before I get um, stuck into painting Renata here, um, we're going to talk about the priming and the um, pre-shade. So priming was done with just the simple aerosol, uh, Citadel Chaos Black. But then I decided it was about time I broke out the airbrush again and I airbrushed uh, a white primer. Um, I believe it was, the, it's the one I usually go to here, um, the Steinal Res. Uh, white primer put through the airbrush. Mostly just top-down work, a little bit of um, focus points maybe along the top of the wings, her shoulders or chest or knee that sort of juts out a little bit more here just to bring those colors up a bit. And the reason I wanted to do that is because she's got such a fluid presence about her. She has a lot of cloth, she has these feathers, these wings, and uh, I really wanted to have that softer feathered uh, effect that the, the airbrush provides and gives me a lot more control over the shadows and the lighting. So I wanted to do that and not do the way I did um, uh, Capac, which was all aerosol work. Um, I thought it was about time we got the airbrush going again because it's one of the simpler techniques you can learn when you're picking up an airbrush for the first time, how to prime, how to pre-shade. So with that said, we're going to start on her skin and um, Lady Renata is, um, she has blue skin, basically. She's kind of a, I, I don't really know how to describe it. I've looked at some of the artwork that's been put up for her, and it's a very much a, a blue tone. So what I'm going to try and do first is give her skin probably two coats of ethermatic blue. Uh, while we're doing, and, you know, after we do that with the first coat, we're going to look at her wings and the wings, I want them to be kind of darker uh, than just regular wings. So what I'm going to go for is uh, a Griff Charger Grey. I'm going to keep that sort of blue tone because it's all part of her body, so to speak. Uh, and then we'll break out into the other colours. We've got reds and purples and yellows to play with as well. Uh, basing will be done quite simply, so we'll not spend too much time on it. However, let's get the Ethermatic Blue and uh, let's start applying that to her skin. Now we're doing this because it's quite a bright color and everything around this is going to be a little bit darker so it's okay if I make a mistake at this you know first sort of step here. So we're just going to give her skin I would I would reckon two coats of this. I don't necessarily want um, anything brighter than this for her, or darker than this for her skin because it'll just make uh, the highlighting process just a little bit more difficult. And I'm trying to see whereabouts on her on her chest here is actual skin and what's what's clothing. I'll be a bit more careful with that. And uh, when I first seen the miniature, if you guys are World of Warcraft players. She very much reminds me of the, the artistic style of the Kyrians in um, the Shadowlands expansion, the recent one. Or most recent one at the time of filming, anyway. Kyrians are kind of cool looking, they have a blue skin tone on them as well, so I was kind of going, kind of aiming for that lighter, 
more interesting looking blue. I didn't want to do anything too solid here. And I'm trying to figure out if her arms would be bare or if they'd be clothed. Kind of hard to hard to discern. But make sure we've got everything in there. Okay. Wash the brush off. And while we're waiting for that first layer to dry, we can move on to our Griff Charger Grey. And we can start uh, on the wings. And this is going to be a bit of a heavier pigment, but uh, contrast paint, so we'll see how this turns out. We can probably accentuate this with a little bit of a br dry brush. But remember, we're always trying to focus on getting something table ready. And I don't mind leaving out a couple of steps here and there just to have a table ready miniature at the end. So we'll get all this done, and you can see that that tighter, or that higher uh, sort of airbrush pre-shade really does help a lot more with retaining uh, a lot of the definition of the pieces that we're colouring in. So if you have an airbrush and you've never used it, or you're, you're trying to figure out how to learn, priming and pre-shade. I, I will always tell anyone, priming and pre-shade is the best way to start. In my opinion, there will be other guys on YouTube that will say yes, no, probably, but you know, don't forget to expand your skill set as well. But I always think if you can get a good prime down and if you're you're happy enough to try appreciate, you've already improved the quality of your paint work. So after having given her skin uh, three coats of ethermatic blue. I have the blue of her skin basically where I want it to be and uh, the wings the wings aren't going to look like much until we get the other colors in and uh, we might give them a little bit of a dry brush but so far so good now we're going to move on to the cloth and I want to pick out the cloth now because after that I want to move on to gold details and a little bit of trim so for the cloth we're going to go with um, no not Magos purple sorry my apologies we're going with um, Volupus, Volupus Pink? Something like that. This is a heavier... I was looking at Magos before I pressed record, but Magos doesn't have enough pigment in it, so Volupus Pink is a little bit better. And what I can do is a couple of layers of this and then uh, give it a wash to make it a, a bit darker if I feel like it. So we're just going to be picking out all her cloth detail in this. We'll maybe leave out a couple of bits here and there because I do have some red that I want to add into this too. Um, so we'll see how that turns out. But for now, we're going to focus on this pinky purple cloth that we, we're going to work on now. So and we're going to leave these little bits here on either side of her belt. Um, we're going to probably end up end up doing those in red, I would imagine. So just going to be a case of putting the first layer down, having a look at it, and then deciding uh, if we need a second layer or not, or if we're okay with what we've got. Remember just to be careful because we're only... we're not wanting to um, completely overwhelm ourselves with the first layer. We want to be a little more delicate as we put the layer down. And this is giving us quite a nice contrast between her blue skin as well. So when this is down and we look at it and think, yeah, we'll add a wash to that, darken it down a little bit further, and we start to make sure that that skin is one of the, the standout features of the miniature. Because it's such a bright color, the, the art that I looked at, she has a very vivid blue skin, and I really want to maintain that and show that off. I'm gonna leave these little streamers alone as well, because I think I'm gonna put those uh, into red as well. With the purple cloth now down, we can have a look at the details that I've picked out. So we have this fan on her head here, on her headpiece. We have the streamers that are running across her wings, which look real nice, and most of her lower sort of skirt area as well. Now, there's two steps we can move on to next, and I think uh, I want to go on to the gold before I do any more uh, of her clothing, because the gold um, I need to define it bef in my head before I move on to the, the red stuff. So we're going to be using for the gold the same we used with Capac. 
we're going to be using Nasdrag Yellow for that um, because I I like stay, uh, steering clear of um, straight metallic paints at the minute for some of this work because I like the stylized look um, that it that it gives us. So it's really going to be a case of just picking out the areas we want. Um, so probably definitely the center of our belt is going to be gold, that's for sure. We'll leave those fans to be red. Get that in there, and I think she has these pieces on her hips. And they certainly look like armor to me, they've got a lot of nice detail and stuff going on there, so... Do them, and that leads on to the piece on her back, on her lower back. You see how that looks. Get her into focus. Yep, I think I'm okay with that. So let's go up and do this sort of big, impressive piece that sort of goes across the top of her chest and kind of forms pauldrons here as well. So it's, it's kind of like a gorget, I guess that sort of forms into pauldrons. We want her to look quite classy, so... With class comes gold. <laughs> Get that sort of really rich, elegant feel about her, so... That's kind of what I'm, I'm trying to aim for. Now, will it work? We'll find out. And of course, from the pauldrons, we have all this um, this armor detail that goes up onto her wings as well, sort of protecting the 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 bone structure that would be under there. And she has her hair here as well. I don't know what color of hair I'm going to give her yet. So let's just keep going here and. See what we get in the end here. And it's kind of like I have seen the art and, and the, a couple of painted versions of her and I'm kind of interpreting what they did and trying to translate that into a finish that's similar but easy or quicker, you know. I translate that down a little bit and that to just to get her table ready. It's a it's a thought process that, that needs a bit of attention when you uh, when you go to paint something and you think yes I just want this table ready, and there's plenty of compromises that you have to make uh, when you're deciding on doing this. It's why the majority of my recent work has been contrast focused because contrast is great for getting table ready um, quality. So. Plus, I also feel like I'm in a bit of an argument with a lot of people online that say that contrast is just cheating. Um, I don't think it matters so long as what you have on the table makes you satisfied. I think the I think the the contrast controversy has kind of quieted down lately, anyway. So, I think people realised that it's just another tool in the box and you should use it as you see fit which is what I like to do now contrast has its place and right now it's doing the gold work on these wings now if you wanted to be super fancy let's let's go a super fancy route what you could have done was dry brushed the armor with silver first and then put the Nasdrag over it and you would have gotten a more metallic finish uh, if you felt like it or you know vice versa dry brush this with a gold to really give it a, a shine and tidy up some of the the marks that the contrast paint will leave because it will always do that but there's so much of it that is personal choice and personal opinion I can show you this way, and you can do it another way, and we'll both be happy. And then we'll get the faceplate of the helmet here. 
or the the top of this this sort of crest or helmet that she's wearing. Right. So the next things then are going to be down onto her legs and we're going to do the claws at the end of her gauntlets as well. She's definitely quite the colourful character, I have to admit, having seen the art. A lot more colourful than I probably anticipated, but it's working, I like it. So, let's down onto this boot. And we'll leave this sort of fan or frilly bit. We'll do that in red. And because I know that I'm doing that bit in red, it doesn't matter if I bring this yellow up onto it too much. Because the red I'm going to be using, I know, is a heavier, uh, a heavier pigmented paint. Just see her foot in there. Alright, and then we have this piece over her backside. And we'll just do that in the yellow too. Okay, so I think that's basically everything I want to be in gold. Um, or have I missed anything in particular? I th yeah, I think there's a... This armor sort of comes down a bit more. Looks like that's plating as well as is that. Doesn't look like the natural feather texture there, so be aware of that as well. Make sure that you're keeping your eye on that. You can miss stuff too easily. More so when you're trying to explain stuff on camera too. <laughs> okay, so we're going to let that dry, and then when it's dry we can come back and we'll start looking at some red details. So with the Nasdrag yellow all dry, we're going to start moving on to some red, and for the red we're going to be using Flesh Terror's red, and this is a nice deep contrast red, so I, I like using it whenever I can. It's kind of, it's a bit less orangey than um, Blood Angel's Red, so we kind of get a richer finish, and that's definitely what I want to aim for here, so. What we'll do is just pick out all the details we want to be in our Flesh Terror Red. Color them in. And then we can move on from there. So, that and Definitely, I think, the parts of the corset that we haven't touched yet. Want some nice red detail going on in there. So it's just going to be a case of going around the model with this, letting it dry, and then see what uh, our next step is going to be. So with the red down, uh, I did a couple of extra little steps here while I was off camera, just um, a quick tidy up. I went over some areas with Nasdrag Yellow again, um, sort of tidied them a little bit up, and uh, I've added some Griff Charger Grey to her hair, because I kind of like that hair being pale with her blue skin, and also matching the same coloration as the feathers. I also take, uh, took that Griff Charger Grey down onto the frills on her cuffs and onto the base of her fingers, make them look a bit more gauntlety, you know, at least there's a colour there, it's doing something for us. Uh, all in all, the red is looking quite nice. It does stand out from the purple as it is, which is great, um, but not too much, it doesn't overpower that uh, more subtle pinkish purple that she has going on on the cloth. Now. I would call her, herself, basically table ready. Now, we just want to work on the base. So, for the base, I'm going to start with a dry brush, and we're going to do Tyrant Skull, Citadel Dry Tyrant Skull, uh, just to give a bit of variation in the, the texture there of uh, the stone and, and whatnot. And then we'll add uh, a contrast paint to that, and that'll basically be it. So. Let's just get in with some Tyrant Skull. We want to avoid hitting what we've already done. 
just want to get the more outer details just to add a bit of visual interest. Leave the stuff that's in shadow alone um, because the contrast paint will basically sort that out for us. So all we're trying to do is get a bit of warmth to the areas that have more light uh, hitting them. Not too much warmth though, of course, because she's quite a, a cold looking character, but maybe that contrast between a warmer, um, light touched base with this sort of imposing figure on top of it would be the, the interesting way to go. So we're not doing too much of this, just picking out sharp edges, but mostly going, as you can see here, mostly going in a vertical fashion just picking out edges and then this facing here on the, the pillar that she stood upon. And we don't really want to do much more than that, just a little bit. So from there, we're going to find my, do I already have it sitting out? I do. We're going to use Basilicanum Grey and we're going to contrast the whole base with that. Once this is dry, once this is down and dry, we'll be heading into the usual end phase of um, giving the, the whole miniature a coat of matte varnish, which will tie everything down, settle all the, the semi-gloss finishes that the contrast paints are sort of giving us, but they always do it haphazardly, so some would sit more matte than others. And I always like to bring them Bring everything right down to a, a base level. So we'll get this done. We can go quite heavy with the contrast in this case and sort of just work it in to all those nooks and crannies. Make sure that the shadows are as dark as we want them to be. And that nothing stands out too weirdly. And yeah, and after that it's just going to be a case of the matte varnish and then we'll be able to close out. And with those last couple of steps done to, uh, to the base there and the matte varnish down over the whole miniature and dried, our Lady Renata is now, fin or Renata, sorry, is now finished. And as I keep saying, you know, we're aiming for a table finish, you know, just get it down on the table and start playing, start having some fun. And I think we've achieved that well enough. You know, we have the blue skin which stands out really nicely against that red and purple uh, sort of clothing. The wings stand out quite nicely without too much work having been done to them. And I think in general it's a very nice model with a ton of detail so you could spend as long as you want on this, make it as good or as detailed as you like. But what I always like to show is the better, the higher the quality miniature, the easier it is for you to paint when you're wanting to get something that's just ready for the table. So I hope that's what you see here. Uh, if you have any comments, please leave them down below. Always like to hear from you guys. Um, always remember that we're trying for that just get it on the table look. We're not trying to get a display piece painted up here. So I hope you appreciate that and appreciate the approach. And um, until then, everybody, do take care of yourselves, stay safe, and see you again very soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.